It's a while since I've taken a look at a grow light, so let's take a look at a grow light. This one came from AliExpress, where a lot of the stuff is coming from these days. And it looked visually quite interesting. I just basically added it onto an order. Good packaging. Very good packaging. It is Edison screw with a little protective cap. Let's put this box out the way. So the listing for this, and I will be lighting it shortly, but the listing said uh, it was $5.50. Um, and it's 18 watt solar full band light. And if you look at the specification over here, it says it's 96 2835 LEDs. And the spectra is interesting because it's got 3000K and 5000K. Now, 3000K is a warm white, 5000K is a colder white. So that's a good, it's at two ends of the white spectrum. So it's going to be a richer color. 395 nanometer, which is the near ultraviolet, it's deep violet color. 660 nanometer, which is a very deep red. And 730 nanometer, which is actually going into the infrared spectrum. Anything else worth mentioning here? No, let's plug it in and try it out. There were a few different types available, including the classic hydroponic pink, the ones that they mix red and blue LEDs and that what uh, many people call purple. So let me just grab the hoppy and we'll analyse its power and then we'll take it apart and see what's inside. So I shall screw this in here, noting that it does have a metal housing and probably an aluminium core PCB on that metal housing. I shall touch it gingerly after I've plugged it in. So plug it in now. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That's a very rich colour. That is a great colour, actually. That, hold on, I'm just going to turn this light off, making sure I don't touch the metal work while I touch the anything over here. That's a nice colour. That is quite a rich colour. That is a good wide blend of colours. Intred. Let's take the exposure off. Is it going to make much difference taking the exposure off? Not really. Could you actually film with this light? You could. It's looking a bit strange now, right enough. Okay, right, tell you what, and bring the other lights back. This may do something weird. Okay, it's back. Actually, I'm going to have to point it away while I do that, just so it gets the correct exposure. So, anyway, uh, power is 17 watts, reasonable enough, 120 milliamps and 0.58 power factor. Is that going to be a capacitive dropper or a little buck regulator? I think there's a good chance it's going to be a buck regulator. Now, before we go further, I'm going to try and zoom down onto this. Is this giving tingles? No, it's not. No. No real noticeable. Oh, there's a slight fuzz off the back with capacitive coupling, hopefully just capacitive coupling. I'm going to pause momentarily and I'm going to try and... Uh, get you an image of what this looks like. One moment, please. Oh, this is very, very bright to look at. I can see alternating uh, cold white and warm white. I can see a lot of the deep red lights. I can see two infrared lights and two ultraviolet or near ultraviolet lights. Just the four LEDs vertically down the middle are the uh, two violet ones and the deep infraredish type ones, which are glowing visibly, but they're not super bright because they are, well, a very infraredish colour, which is not totally visible to the eyes. Right, tell you what, the light is coming back. Watch your eyes. Well, it's already here, but watch your eyes regardless. I'm just going to change back down to the bench. Okay, right, it's time to unscrew this light and then open it and see what circuitry is revealed inside. I think most of the magic here is ultimately the choice of LEDs in this panel. And they did do a couple of different versions. They just did a white one, they did the purple one, and they did this one. I chose this one because I thought it would be interesting to look at how they'd how they'd distributed the LEDs. I shall unplug the happy-ish meter. Right. Is this going to unscrew from the back? Nope. Is this going to pop out the front? Spudger. Where is the spudger? The spudger should be here. The spudger is is not where it should be. Uh, one minute. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Here is the spudger. Right. Okay. Excellent. So I'm going to stick this down here. This may not pop out. It may require more than this, particularly if it's glued in. Is it glued in? I think it's just going to be a friction fit. That's making slightly crunchy noises, but that might be glue. I shall just repeatedly stab 
The clicks are probably breaking plastic. Or it could just be breaking glue. If this is going to take ages, I may pause momentarily. Because it it's not inspiring so far. With lights like these, I do recommend not touching them. Oh, I see the silicon-ish type glue around down the inside. Oh, this is going to take a while. Oh, tell you what, I shall slice around it like this with this spudger. It is slicing. And hopefully that will release the plastic off the front. The dome, which incidentally has ventilation holes in it. Is this going to do it? It kind of feels like it's coming out, but it's not really coming out. I shall keep slicing around. Slice, slice, slice. Yeah, with uh, fittings like this, do keep in mind that because the LEDs can fail in these fittings by burning up if they're running uh, series circuits with a fairly high current. And when that happens, you can end up with uh, conductivity between the aluminium, the, L, the front of the circuit board is supposed to be isolated in the back of the aluminium panel, which is in contact with this. Just keep that in mind. This is not coming off terribly easily. Let me use something more forceful. The spudger bends. This doesn't bend. Right. And the LED panel, is it going to pop off? It's glued down as well. But, you know, we can use force. We can use the force. Sorry about the clicking noises. I know it's going to be making click noises. I think they've changed the software on the phone that uh, reduces the clicking noises. But nonetheless, there will probably be some. Because there are limits to what it can do to compensate for me using extreme force to dismantle things. Oh, this is glued down well. It's also going to render this completely unusable. But you know what? That's why I buy it. So we can take it to bits. So you don't have to take yours apart. It's there. What do we have? We've got a fairly decent... I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. Actually, I can already see components in here. So it's not really a guess anymore, is it? Right, tell you what. Let's uh, lop some wires. Lop. I will lop them as well. Interesting. Oh, they've used lots of glue. That's good in a way. It, it, it's got good thermal coupling then. But there is always that void in the middle that doesn't have good thermal coupling. Right, let's open this little Christmas package. What do we have? Yellow sticky tape. Uh, should check this as discharge before dabbling it with my fingers. Hold on, I shall just do that right now. I shall just gingerly poke across there. That looks like the big spicy capacitor. The death beam capacitor. Is it dead? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, that is probably the 400 volt capacitor. This is a little buck regulator. Based on... It's got an inrush limiter. It's got the metal oxide varistor. It's got a... I'll take a picture of this and we can take a closer look at it. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. So this circuit board, and I couldn't fit the whole thing in without getting a reflection of LEDs because of the, the size of the circuit board and the area I take pictures. Um, the circuit board has 96 LEDs divided into four sections. It's down here as 24 per section and four in parallel. Now, normally with LEDs like this, let me zoom down this. Normally with an LED arrangement like this, you would have matched forward voltage the LEDs, but they've not really done that too well. For instance, this one is mostly the, well, it's 20 white LEDs and it's one, two, three, four of the red LEDs and the red LEDs are going to have a forward voltage about two volts. And if they'd somehow managed to match that throughout, it would have balanced the voltage between the panels because they're in parallel and the current would flow through them evenly. However, if we take a look at um, this one here, it's got the four, but also then instead of two uh, similar voltage LEDs. It's got the similar under 30 nanometer, which is even lower than red. It's about 1.5, I think, for that. And it's got 395 nanometer, which is slightly higher voltage, but closer to the white LED voltage. So the voltage in this section is potentially going to be a little bit lower, and the voltage in uh, this section is going to be a bit lower. So these two sections are going to see the most current. 
And once the LEDs start failing, then the other sections will get brighter and they'll start burning up too. But that's more or less it. Notice that the, as is tradition with Chinese manufacturing, W is for the cold white, Y is for the warm white. They call warm white yellow. They don't seem to be able to associate warm white as a colour as such. Let's take a look at the circuit board for the driver. It's very typical. It's based on a DP6502T, which I looked at recently. Hard to find the data sheet, but when you realise that there's a sort of range of standard chips with a, like 9503, then you can find a common data sheet. And there is something interesting about this one. The incoming supply has a fusible resistor, looks like one ohm. It's got a metal ox of resistor across that. What's the value of that? It is a, let's just read the number off it. It says... 07D511. 07D511. That means it's 7 millimeters diameter. Looks a bit bigger than that. The D stands for disc. And the 511 means it's uh, 510 volts. Let's uh, make sure that's zeroed out. Go across like that. It is. It's about a bit more than 7. But 7 might relate to the disc inside the lacquer. But uh, I'll just make excuses for them. So it's got the metal ox of resistor, it's got the bridge direct far going to the big fat capacitor. I think this was about 15 microfarad death beam capacitor. 15 microfarad, 400 volt, that is a big capacitor. Then it powers the circuitry, which basically is this chip. It's got a couple of current sense resistors. An odd value here, I'll show you in the schematic, and a standard base value. And this value here is chosen from a wider range just to fine tune that. The over voltage protect has a shunt across it, which is interesting to know that you can just shunt those pins together and it bypasses that feature. That's when the output goes open circuit. The high voltage input is a 15K resistor. That is odd. They've done that as well. And then the output has the capacitor and the little high speed diode for uh, the freewheel diode. And I'll show you that in the schematic, which is the manufacturer's schematic again. That saves me redrawing stuff. So let's make the final modification required to this, which is that 15K resistor, which they've put in here. 15K. And that is feeding the high voltage uh, supply for this chip. It is quite odd that these chips can operate at like hundreds of volts these days. Now see the earth symbol here. That is not actually earth. It's actually used to indicate uh, the common zero volt rail. So I shall just write zero volt there and zero volt there and zero volt there and zero volt there just to avoid confusion, not that you will be too confused. So the chip works by pulsing this end of the inductor to the zero volt rail and current flows through these two current sense resistors, the 1.6 ohm surface mount resistor and the 5.7 ohm, which is a really bizarre value. I, I was wondering if the colours were right, but it is a fine tuning resistor, so it will be an odd value. But they've got that across there to give a very specific value so that the output is a, a known power. And they'll fine tune that the value of this resistor, basically, above or below that base level to fine tune it to the LEDs. The inductor I measured in circuit is 1.9 millihenry. Not sure how accurate that will be. And uh, the end of this is pulsed down to the zero volt rail. So this goes negative and that is effectively positive. Current flows through the LEDs and charges up capacitor, but is limited by the magnetic field building up in this. Then this turns off and this field collapses. This goes positive and that goes negative. And this time, as it collapses, the current is diverted through this diode back into the capacitor and through the LEDs, so it's a, just an efficient way of doing things. The zero ohm link across this, they basically just shorted the over voltage protect to the zero volt rail. Uh, that's quite interesting that they've done that. I didn't know you could do that. Uh, it normally detects the voltage that it's seeing across this capacitor. And if the voltage goes too high, you can set that with a resistor and you can set it so that if the LEDs go open circuit, it will basically just turn off. But in this case, if they've shunted it to the zero volt rail, I think that bypasses that. It means if it goes, if the LEDs go open circuit, the voltage across this capacitor will shoot right up until something goes pap. But that's it. Very interesting thing. I like the case. I do like the housing. I liked it more before I put all these awful dents in the side of it. But it was kind of siliconed in. Um, 
as I mentioned before, with the aluminium core PCBs, when things go wrong and the LEDs burn up, it can actually burn through the insulating layer. And you can end up with the aluminium at the back becoming reference to the mains. There is a possibility, although it is sitting on glue, that's nothing to trust, that uh, it may insulate. But there is that possibility it could make this live, just as sometimes can happen. You just have to treat modern lights with metal housings as potentially becoming live. But that's it. It's interesting. Interesting colour choice. The mixture of the deep violet, the deep red and the infrared to just create a more full-bodied spectrum for your plants. But as it was, shining on the bench, this actually had quite a nice colour. But that's it. The the hydroponic sunlight emulating lamp with a, a mixture of whites and then just random violets and reds and infrareds thrown in just for a good measure. It's quite an interesting light. Well worth taking apart.